Welcome everybody to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Basic Knit Ribbed Family Hat. So I've been getting into knitting lately because I'm getting burnt out on crochet. So I'm just changing over hobbies just temporarily just to give my brain some exercise. And I'm also learning with you. So this is a hat that's available from 2 to 4 years, 6 to 10 years, and adult. And what I have here is that I created an adult diversion for myself. And so this is using Bernat Softy Chunky Yarn to do the adult hat. You'll need two of these balls. I'm not sure how many balls that you would need for the children's size versions, but I would just bank on two. If you want to change the color at any point, I changed it about after three inches here in order to do this. And it does have a brim. So I'll give you some options just in case you don't want the brim and you just want it to be straight on down just like you see it like that, that's up to you, and then matches the top of your head. So there's more of the rows included to provide that for you. The pom-pom, of course, you can make it with the yarn that's provided with, uh, with the yarn, or you can just get a pre-made pom-pom like I did. So what we want to use today is a six and a half millimeter size, 10 and a half US. So I use circular knitting needles because I find it easier for myself, or you can get the straight on sticks uh, from the craft store if you wish. So today I'm going to teach you as an easy level. So I'm going to just cover the basic stitches and then we're going to go through the pattern. So all sizes are going to be on this video. So where I'm going to tell you to change is where we're going to stop in the video and I'll tell you to go to a certain information and we'll be jumping. So I'm going to be doing the child size version here, the two to four years of age, but I've also done the adult just for myself so I understand the pattern. So without further ado, we're going to get started and just get you to do this. And there's video chapters in this video. So if you want to skip the basics on how to do things, just go to the video chapters in the video description and then you can find how to skip ahead by using the time markers. One thing I want to leave you here, the Bernat Softy Chunky that I'm using is not the same. This is a small version. They had a bigger size version that's been discontinued with the 14 ounce balls. These are only three and a half ounce. So that's why there's a difference. So we're going to begin and we're going to cast on. Uh, you can do the 55, 59, or 63. So do you see the color breakdown? If you are colorblind, the one, two, and three are the orders of which information is, is provided. So the child, the two to four, child six to 10 and adult. So you're gonna choose the number that matches the size that you wanna do. In my case, it'll be 55, but the big version that I did for the adult is 63. So you can see it's not many stitches different from the two to four years to the adult size in order to change it. So whenever there's a change of information, then we're gonna do this. Today, we're gonna to be doing the mistake rib pattern uh, throughout, and it's a very easy pattern to remember. Speaking for me personally, I like to reach into a ball and just grab what I believe is the center. It's called yarn barf when you pull out too much yarn, but because you are knitting, you're going to just use that. So once you pull that out, the center is here. And so then you just have to figure where everything is coming out here. Okay, so um, just make sure that it's just easier if you go from the center of the ball out uh, because of tension reasons, but if you choose not to, then that's up to you. Okay, so you decide what's right for you. To start with, we need to create a slip knot and just keep an extra long tail so that you can use a tapestry needle later to sew that in to position. To create a slip knot, you may have different ways. I use my finger like so, and you're just going to take the strand and just wrap it around your finger twice. Remember, we have tutorials available for this that are specific to the um, idea. This is called the slip knot. So just finger out, wrap the yarn twice. Take the two strands and pinch with the other three fingers. Take the back of this here and jump over. And then take the new back one right here and go up and over. And therefore you have a slip knot. I'll demonstrate one more time. Point, wrap, pinch. Take the back one over the front and the new back one over like that. And now this is your beginning slip knot, and we want to get our knitting needles ready. I am right-handed. I cannot teach left-handed with a camera flip, so this is only available in right hand. I want you at this time to put your one needle into the loop and pull. And when you pull on it, don't pull to the point where it's so hard to get your stitch work out. It should just slide in and out. And therefore, we're going to get ready. Now, in your other hand, how you feed the yarn is up to you. And I'm just going to just put these two side by side. I take my pinky and I clap on, or I wrap around the yarn and then back up. 
Here, I'll just demonstrate it real quick. This is how I put it into my hand. Okay, so let's so you pin, grab it, wrap, and on the inside, like that. Wrap. If you have different ways of doing this, this is up to you and come out to the outside of your hand. You're going to use this part of your finger to wrap around the needles. So one more time and wrap. So we're gonna do a twist and transfer for casting on. This is a tight casting on, it does provide a beautiful edge. And so you're gonna cast on the number of stitches that you want. In my case, it's gonna be 55. You could have chose 59 or 63. To do this, you're going to put this into the same slip knot and just come up under the side and go towards the back side there. And so that whole knot is holding both of those needles and this needle here is on the back side. Using your fingers and you'll get used to holding this. If you prefer a pinch and throw, you can just pinch like that and throw. But in time, you may develop a new skill like that. So what I want to do is just, I want to come over and wrap. Okay, and so it comes down in between and I want to just slide the one on the right down and I want to turn it so that it's going to capture that strand that we just wrapped and we push up like so, give it a bit of slack and then you're going to turn it around and stick this needle on the underside of that loop and transfer it over. Okay. Now I would have done a retake to show how much easier that is, but I prefer that you see that I haven't done this in a few days, so I'm a little rusty. So you may be the same way. So I don't wanna project that I'm perfect. So you now have two there. So now you're just gonna go into the new one in Okay, wrap the yarn around the back needle and pu push it down and flip it out to capture that strand. Turn the needle and use this needle to go up underneath and transfer on. The trick for this particular cast on is that you don't wanna be too overly tight. Okay, so then you got three on the loops. So I'll demonstrate a few more, so wrap, and if you prefer a different cast on, by all means, please do that. This is my preferred method. So, so you wrap around and in. Now, if you're watching this at a different time of year, it's Halloween next month for me. It's now September 2022, so I'm doing this pumpkin color just for the fun of it. And I can put it in my charity box for later. So I want you to continue to cast on to the number that you want. It's either 55, 59, or 63. And I don't know any other sizes in between what's suggested on the pattern. So just choose one of those and keep on doing it until you can count the number of stitches that's in the cast on. And I'll be right back. So I've now just cast it on a total of 55. You could have done 59 or 63, depending on your size. The next row I'm about to teach you is the same row throughout the whole thing uh, for the next seven inches, eight and a half, or nine and a half inches, depending on your size. If you do not want the brim, then what you can do is that in the child's version, you can just subtract two off of that. So instead of seven inches, you can go to five. And then instead of eight and a half inches, you can go to six and a half. And instead of nine and a half inches, you can go to seven and a half inches. And therefore you will not have the, the roll of the brim. I think the roll of the brim is kind of cute. So let's begin row number one. If you are using sticks without the circulars, then what happens is that you're transferring from back and forth and we're going to put the hat together at the end. So you're going to be noticing that it's gonna be a flat panel. So another thing that I wanna show you is on the pattern itself. Let me give you my example and show you. It's not gonna be obvious in the very beginning, but what happens is, is that one uh, column like this will always stay 
a knit stitch and the other one right in between will always stay a purl stitch and it's the stitches in between that keep switching positions in order to create this look and so you will not notice this right away that this is happening but once you understand that uh, what happens is that if you think you're going off the wrong uh, track then these can help uh, stabilize you back into position that's something to watch for and you'll notice that as you're building this up so row number one, all the way to either seven inches, eight and a half, or nine and a half, I'll say what's on the pattern, is always the same thing. So you're gonna always start off with knitting two, then purling two, knitting two, and then purling two. And right at the very end, you are gonna end up with just one purl at the very end. Once you have the all, all transferred to the other side, when you start the next row, you'll start exactly the same. Knit two, purl two, and do that all the way, and the very last one will be done a purl one. So because you're doing that and it's an odd number, the ribs keep shifting just slightly, which makes it the rib, uh, the mistake rib stitch. So you're going to notice that's going to happen throughout. So let's begin. To start, you're going to knit two. So let's put the yarn in our hand. And the first two, you're going to notice that this is really tight. It's going to relax after the first pass through, and then it will get fun. So stick the hook in, or sorry, stick the needle into the same one as the beginning and so it separates it and it's on the back side we're doing the knit stitch and we're just going to wrap the yarn around the back and just shift forward and once it's successfully onto this needle you're just going to use your fingers and pull that loop off the next one is also a knit so you're just going to stick the needle in on towards the back side wrap it and then shift down and flick it. And once it's successfully on this one, you shift that loop off. The next two are pearls. To start the pearls though, you need to move this strand that I'm shaking and you need it to move it between the two needles to the front side before you start. And the next two are pearls. So you're just gonna, instead of um, going in underneath, you're just gonna go straight across like this. And I'll demonstrate this a few times. Then take the strand, wrap it around the front needle, and then pull that down and flick it towards the back, capturing that strand. If you're not having enough tension, that strand will just kind of loosely fall off your needle. So just make sure you keep the tension nice. Once it's successfully on, just shift up. It's harder to get off in the first row here, but you'll notice the next rows, it'll be a much easier slide. The next one is also a pearl. So stick the needle through the top on the front side, wrap around and shift down and towards the back and then slide off. Now the next two are pearl, or sorry, are in the knit stitch. You need to take this strand between to the back then you can start doing your knit stitch. So go in towards the back side, wrap, shift forward, and slide up. So you might want to just take your loops down here and start shifting them up to get higher as it's easier to slide off. So that's a knit stitch. You'll do the next one the same way. Now the next two are pearls. To do the purl, remember that this strand has to come in between first to the front side, then you can do your purl. And this needle stays towards the front. Wrap around and flick back. Okay, and do the next one. So this is changing the direction of the stitch by doing it this way. So the next two are knit stitch, move to the back first, then come in on the back side and knit two. Okay, and then I will leave you with the next set of two and then you'll do the rest on your own until the very end. So the next two are pearls, move it in front. And I want you to keep alternating between the two all the way to the end. You're gonna have one stitch left on your needle and that's where I'm going to pick you up at the very end of that. So the two stitches before the end should be a knit stitch and the last one should be a purl and that's where I'll pick you up in just a few moments from now. 
I'm coming to the last three stitches. So I've just purled two. So I'm going to knit these two first. And the very last one will always be just a purl one. So there's only one stitch for purl. And it's that one stitch that's on its own that causes that whole pattern to do what it does. I want to just pull this out and I want to show you a few things. Whenever you saw that the line crosses the front like this, this was a purl. If it shows like this, this was a knit. So if it helps you and something is going wrong to identify which ones are which, that's what you're looking for. So if it crosses the front, you did a purl. And if you don't see it at all, that was a knit stitch. And so that will take you to the end. So let's turn our work. Okay, so you would be switching needles if you were um, having two sticks. In my case, I'm just rotating this back around. And we're now going to come in the opposite direction to do row number two, which is the same as row number one. So let's get the yarn in our hands and let's begin. So the first two are always going to be a knit two. So do you see, you can see that these here are pearls when you turn it around. So by doing the knit two like this, one is turning around on this stitch, the other one is just staying as a knit stitch. And that's what's creating those lines. So the first two are a knit stitch. You're going to notice that this is more relaxed in your hands as well. So the first two, and you can slide it off pretty easily. So the tension is pretty much almost gone. So then the next two are pearls. So you're going to just purl. And I'm gonna show you a tip in just a second. Now, we're gonna just do the next two is knit. So you're gonna notice is that this one here is a knit stitch because you can see that this here is a purl. So this here one is gonna be the one that looks like a knit stitch all the way up through the hat. So you're gonna knit that one. And this one here, because you're going into a purl and making it a knit stitch, it's turning it backwards, which is the transition in between. The next two are a purl. So this one here, you can see it's a purl. So you're going to keep it as a purl. So that will be the other line that will be going straight up onto this hat. And the next one is going to be a purl into the knit stitch, which turns the stitch around. I think it's important to identify that. So let's go, the next two are a knit stitch. So do you see that the first one here is a knit? This is a purl. And so if you're ever off track in any way, to be able to identify those stitches is really key. That's what I learned in this whole thing. And the next two are purl. So I want you to go all the way across and what's gonna happen on the very last stitch? Do you remember? It should be a purl by itself. So if you get to the last three stitches and the last uh, two stitches before the end is not a knit stitch, you know that something is wrong. If, for example, say you had a mistake and you can look back and say, well, gee, I made a mistake. When you, It's called tinking. And what you'll do for that is that you will just release off only the ones that you are doing. So don't just pull your whole needle out and try to figure it out. Just pull one at a time and carefully pull the loop. Now, when this is going back onto the needles, the way that it happens is that the yarn strand comes out of the front and it goes to the back behind the needle over top and it comes around the front. So what you have to do is that you have to make sure it goes on in the same order. So this is regardless if it's purl or knit or purl or knit. So when you put it on, you have to make sure that the strand that we'll be leaving out of this one here to go to the next one is going towards the back side. And so you'll have to put it on like this. Okay, so the strand came out and it went to the back side up and over, and this is here on the front, and that goes to the back side. So if you put it on in the reverse direction, then what happens is that it'll turn the stitch and it will be very obvious. Now I do have another video in the shorts format that'll be available later today. Um, it's September 25th today, and it will show you how to be able to fix something. Something. So if you don't catch it right now, the error, you can fix it later on in the future by just releasing the stitches, and you can see a video for that. And what I'll do is I'll probably put that video with the more information link as well. And so what you want to do is that you want to continue your path going across. So if you put it down and you're not sure what you just did, you can see that this has a crossover, so it's a purl that you did 
and so then this one has to be a purl. So look towards the stitches that are behind if you're in case you're losing your point of where you are. Okay, so the next two are knit. See those two? They're all in pairs. And you're going to do that. So I'll meet you at the end of the row in just a few moments. I'm sorry being long-winded. I want to give you lots of tips because I learned a lot on this because this was the very first hat I ever made for myself. So I'm coming up to the end. I've just done two purls. So the next two have to be a knit stitch. So I know that my stitch counts are proper. And the last one must be a purl before I finish. So I've already demonstrated on how to do the rows. The rows are exactly the same and they're just gonna keep building out. You turn your work. And after about five rows, you're gonna really start seeing this happen. And it's really a cool thing. So what I need you to do, let's just do it as per the pattern. So I want you to keep doing this to either it's seven inches tall, eight and a half or nine inches tall or nine and a half inches tall. And then the ending of how this finishes is the same for everybody. And so it will work out and I need you to do that. So let's continue to do that the same row back and forth until either seven inches, eight and a half or nine and a half inches. And I'll pick you up in just a few seconds, but I got some homework to do in the meantime. So welcome back. And last time I left you, we were just finishing up and I told you to get to seven inches. You could could have done to eight and a half and nine and a half inches. And now we're going to shape the top and it's gonna be the same information for all the different sizes. The only difference is that you have less stitches to work with depending on the size. So I will tell you, it took me several hours to get here. So if you feel like yourself that it's taking a long time, it took me a long time too. So I don't know how many hours, but it was several hours. And so when you are wearing this hat or when the child is, it's gonna roll up like this. So you're thinking it's pretty big, but once you get the roll, then it changes everything. So now we're going to consider uh, continue to shape the top and let's get started right now. So let's begin, and this is the same information for all of sizes. So we're gonna start with the very first one and we're going to do a knit stitch. So we're gonna knit the first one. And then the pattern states is that you are going to purl three together. Now, if you're worried about it, don't. You're gonna move the strand between the post to the front side, and you are going to collect the next three loops. So this is gonna be relatively tight, so just be patient with yourself. And you are just going to go in and do the purl and collect three stitches at the same time. And just once you get all three, it's gonna be tight, which is what you want. And then you can purl and push through. And once you have all the three done and you can do it, you can slide off. So just to recap, you're going to knit the next one. So move the strand back, knit the next one. So that's the stitch you'll love. And then you've got to purl the next three. So move the yarn forward and purl the next three. So please do this all the way across and I will see you on the other side. Um, there is an imbalance of the stitch count and that's done right at the end. And that's where I'll pick you up in a moment. When you get to the far side, after you've done the purl three, you have one knit stitch left and then you're gonna purl the last two together. So instead of purling three, you purl the last two. So then you know you're doing it right if you have that situation going on. And you will notice that once we did this is that the, the knit stitch continued to be in the same position and the purling of the three stayed in the groove. And that's really great. So let's turn our work and let's begin the next rows. So the next five rows, rows number two, three, four, five, and six are all going to be the same. So I'll just show it once. You're gonna come into the first one and you're going to do a knit stitch. The next one is going to be a purl. So move that yarn forward and do the purl. It's gonna be a lot easier than it was in the last row. So then next one is a knit stitch. And the next one would be a purl. And you're gonna do that all the way across. And then I will meet you on the end of this row just to verify. And then I'm gonna kick you off and do, uh, you can do the remaining of those rows and then we'll finish this together on row number seven, which will be the end. So I'm coming close to the other side and I just wanna make sure that everything is working out. So because we put the purl uh, two together at the end, the stitch counts are going to be in an equal number, which will be in balance. 
So as you're working your way across, you're going to notice that we started off with knit one, and then the next one was purl one, and then we did knit one, and then purl one. So if you're coming to the end, the second last one should be a knit one, and the last one should be a purl one. And this was row number two. Okay, so you'll see that everything is just maintaining itself. So let's continue and I'm going to just turn my work and now I want you to do rows number three, four, five, and six exactly the same way and I'll be back in a moment. So I want to demonstrate a mistake that I've made that is continuing for the whole duration of this side right here. So do you see how it looks different? It looks proper this way, but this side looks like it's completely random. So I know that I made a mistake. So you don't have to pull apart your knitting in order to fix something like this. So what you can do is that we know that this is incorrect somewhere, okay? It doesn't look the same. So what this means is that I probably purled when I should have knit and etc. So what I can do here before you decide to knit it, so the yarn's here, you're going to release just this loop. Don't do any more loops other than that. Grab a small crochet hook or something with a hook and release the yarn from the loop. Then keep on going down until you think that it doesn't, it will look proper. So it looks like the mistake is right here. So I'm just going to pull this yarn through. And I'm only releasing the loops. You can do this on loom knitting too. So what I want to do is that I want to duplicate how this looks. So because I know that this is a purl, it's easier for me to turn my work the other way and complete it in this way. So here's the loop and I'm going to turn it. So I'm gonna just pull through because on this side, it looks like the knit stitch. And then once that one's pulled through, I'm going to pull this through. And before I do anything else, I wanna turn my work. And so now it looks the same as here. So when you put this loop back on, you want to do it so that it will get wrapped correctly. So how this is, is that the yarn strand comes in over, it goes towards the back side, it comes up and over, and this strand that comes out comes to the front, and then this one goes to the back. So when I go to loop this on, I want to loop it in the same formation, okay? So it does it look right, yes or no, and if you're not sure, just pull. So I can tell that I just did that wrong. So I'm just going to release and turn it the other way. So that it, see the yarn strand comes out, it goes towards the back, up and over, and then to the front side. Once you have that done, then you can just do what you need to do with that one. So that one is a purl, so I wanna keep it as a purl. Okay, so I'm gonna do that one and release. So I know that the next, all these are wrong. So I'm just going to strategically do it. This one should be uh, looking like a knit stitch going up. So I'm just gonna release just the one loop and grab that little hook thing and just start releasing just the one. Don't you dare release all the loops because you'll screw yourself and not in a good way. So I want to make sure that it's doing right. So I'm just looking down. And so then this one here, I go in and pull up. And now that looks right to me. We put it back on, so I'm looking at the orientation. You'll know pretty quickly of that orientation if you're wrong. So this one was a knit stitch, so then the yarn comes to the back and we keep it in the back. Okay, so you don't have to fear too much in knitting um, as long as you're strategic about it. So I wanna fix the remaining of these going across and I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm at the end of row number five. I gotta do number six yet, but I've just now tinked my way. It's called tinking. And then I can turn my work and do the last row. So you don't wanna do that too often. I'm making mistakes like that, but if it happens, um, you shouldn't sweat it. It should be fixable. Let's uh, get me my last row done, row number six, and I'll be right back. And finally, we're on the last row. So I know for myself is that there's not enough yarn on this small balls here in order to do a pom-pom with this yarn. So I would need a second one. So I'll make a note of that in the video description. So let's do your last uh, row here. This is row number seven. And how we're going to do it is that we're going to knit the first one. So we're gonna do a reduction. So we're gonna knit the first one. 
and then we're going to knit the next two together. So K2 together and the pattern is knit two together. So going up and capture both of them in a knit formation and coming through. So you're just reducing the two stitches to be one. So you'll knit the next one and then knit the next two together. And you're gonna do this all the way across and I'll be right back in a moment. Um, just so that you know the very last stitch is a purl one and that just keeps it so that you can um, do a great job in the end and I'll be right back. So you're coming up to the very end so I'm just uh, gonna knit two together. Okay that's the end of the sequence and then the last one is going to be a purl and the reason for it is that they want the edging to look the same right and therefore this is done. So what we're going to do is we're gonna grab a tapestry needle and we're gonna cut this strand long enough that we not only can feed through the top of here, but we can sew this together to form the hat. And you'll see that it's not as big as it looks. And once you be able to do that. So what you can do at this point is that just trim an extra long strand and join me back here in just a moment. So I'm right-handed, as you know, these, these knit tutorials are all right-handed because you can't film a left-handed version just by a camera flip. So what I have done now is that I put the yarn strand on the right side and I wanna go through the loops. So I'm just gonna pick and pop through. And I wanna do that for each one. So once it's on, I'm gonna capture the next and pop. And if you just wanna pull through some strands just to kind of hold it, you can do that but I wouldn't pull tight until you're close to the getting everything on there. So go to the next one, through and pick, and keep doing that all the way across. So I'm close to the end, I'm just picking off the final two. You don't have to pick off one at a time, you can do two if you want, or three. And I can release my needles out and put those away forever. <laughs> so what I can do now at this point is that I can pull this strand and I, instead of just kind of pulling on it, I want to kind of attach it to the very beginning one over here. And what that will do is it will form the top to be a circle. And just keep on pulling it till the whole top collapses in on itself. Just like that. So now you still have an open area and you got the top closed. And the way that I prefer to close the top end is that I prefer where it comes out, I prefer to go directly across and down in and then back over so that this yarn strand crosses over the top. Pull tight so you get a more tighter fix and then go in across formation. So right where it comes out, just go across and across. Okay, so now the top is closed. So now we wanna work down the back edge here. And all you're just gonna do, it's called a whip stitch, and you're just gonna go across and capture a couple, I would say a couple strands on both sides. So you got two strands there, two here, so, and then come across and then pull tight. And work strategically down. You might be able to see the stitch work on where you need to go. And your, your biggest thing that you need to watch for is that when you go to sew it, make sure that the, they stay even. So don't just keep on going because you end up, could be like that. So keep everything even and work your way down the seam. So coming all the way down to the very bottom and just go right into the edge piece and edge on both sides. And just kind of look at it and make sure it looks like it's attaching. So once it's at the bottom, I'm going to then just make sure that this ties itself into a knot. Okay, and then once I have that done, if you wanna do another knot, you can, uh, but I'm gonna weave it up through the seam line of where I just made. And I'm gonna go through once. The first pull, don't pull it so you're changing the shape, and then you're gonna come back down to where you come from. Sorry, my dog's barking at nothing. Does your dog bark at air? <laughs> you can leave me a comment on that. Okay, so we got that, and we're just gonna go back and forth a total of three times. Uh, it should never fall out on you if you do that. Now you have your first strand that you need to, to deal with, so you're also gonna deal with that as well. 
And if you had to change your yarn at any point, if you did coloring or whatever, you'll have to weave those in as well. And it, this is already a slip knot, but you still want to take your time and do the up and down motion three times as well. So don't be cheap about the final detail because you put so much work into this thing already, right? So what did you feel about this project? Um, if you've never knit before, um, you may feel like it was a bit of a daunting task. Um, I feel like it's much slower than uh, crochet, but I'm feeling like um, you really can't compare the crafts because they're completely different monsters and how they turn out. So once that's done, then you can put a, uh, a turn this inside out and everything should look pretty good. There we go. Okay, and so you have your seam line here. You can flip it up. See, it's not as big as it looks. Okay, you can flip that up. And for myself, I have like a pre-made pom-pom. Uh, so it's green. And so I'm gonna, gonna apply the green so it looks kind of like a pumpkin top. Um, that's something that you can decide for yourself. And the way that I'm gonna do the pumpkin, uh, the pom-pom, I might as well show you while I'm here, is that I'm just going to cut a large strand and also put this through a tapestry needle. And very carefully, do not stab yourself because these pom-poms that are pre-made are kind of tough. There's usually a place where they go. Um, this here is not tight enough. So what I want to do is where, right where that's coming out, if I just want to jam my needle into the fabric itself that's holding the pom-pom together and just kind of go through. And so in craft shows, people get really bent out of shape when they have their um, with pom-poms. I don't know, it's a North American thing. I don't know why people fear them or they don't like them, but I love them. And so you're gonna take the needle of the one strand and you're gonna go down, put your hand in behind, go down, and you're just gonna pull the one strand through. And then on the other strand, you wanna do the same thing, but on the opposite side of the top. So it sits directly in the middle. So right where you come out of, go opposite. And once that one's through, you can pull. So just carefully pull both strands until the pom-pom is resting at the top of the hat. Now, if you ever do a craft show, people, if they don't like pom-poms, it's not a deal breaker, but you, uh, if people have an option to remove it. So what I would do is that I will just tie it into a bow tie here and then cut the remaining strand off. And so if people want to remove the pom-pom, you could just turn it over and say, well, the pom-pom is re uh, removable and therefore you can attach and have something like this, a little cute little pumpkin hat. So this is a great little pattern. Um, it was a lot cooler than I expected it to be. I really enjoyed it. So I have an adult version and I also have um, this child version. You can tell that the hat sizes are not that much different um, just other than the length and it's a really good day here on the Crochet Crowd and please subscribe if you haven't done so and we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.